Hey all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 2015 book by Steve Inskeep, Jackson Land, President Andrew Jackson, Cherokee Chief John Ross, and a great American land grab. Andrew Jackson, who I discussed already in my video on the H.W. Brand's biography of the man, and John Ross, Cherokee named Kuis Gui, born the 3rd of October 1790 in Turkeytown, Alabama, died the 1st of August 1866 in Washington, D.C. Born to a Scottish father and a Cherokee mother, Ross was raised a member of the Cherokee Nation while simultaneously learning the world of American politics, the latter thanks in part to his ability to be white passing. His lighter skin tone would continue to serve as a political boon for him. Ross was elected chief of the Cherokee Nation in 1828, after which his biggest responsibility became advocating for the Cherokee Nation in the negotiations surrounding the Indian Removal Act. This involved Ross engaging in a political back and forth with President Jackson, who had actually commanded him for a period of time during the War of 1812. This book was written by Stephen Allen Inskeep, born the 16th of June, 1968, in Carmel, Indiana. A graduate of Moorhead State in Kentucky, Inskeep is most famous for being, since 2004, the host of Morning Edition, the daytime radio news program operated by NPR. While many of Inskeep's most high-profile assignments have been in the Middle East, specifically Karachi, which was the subject of his first book in 2011, he's done a great deal of domestic correspondence as well, and he's mentioned in interviews that pre-Civil War America is especially interesting to him as a subject due to its parallels with certain aspects of today's hyper-partisan politics. And Jackson Land certainly touches on these ideas, even if they're not completely central to the story. But what of the story? Well, it's framed to be a sort of chess match between these two powerful leaders, Jackson on offense, manning the white pieces, if you will, and Ross on defense, wielding the black pieces. The truth is, though, that the Indian Removal Act debate involved plenty of ancillary characters, and Inskeep doesn't allow us to get too sucked into the Jackson versus Ross narrative. That would cause a bit of a tunnel vision, and the surrounding characters come in, play their role, and get out of the fray in an efficient manner. So it never hyper-fixates on anything, uh, focusing more on kind of the broader narrative, which I appreciate. Efficiency is the key to the writing here, too. Inskeep's background is in writing for radio, which requires succinct, clear sentences and a mindfulness of time constraints. This book doesn't read like a radio report, per se, but it absolutely does not lack for clarity, and that is a major strength. I will also say that even though this book does break down the bureaucratic political hand-wringing that led to the Indian Removal Act being passed, it doesn't lose sight of the humanity, or lack thereof, concerning what went on in those days. In Skeep's epilogue, where he discusses his own interactions with contemporary Cherokee members, puts a fitting bow on everything. Really, the one thing I wish there was more of is John Ross, frankly. A uh, lack of written records surrounding Ross limit what can be done on that front, unfortunately. But he does bring a lot of that aforementioned humanity into the narrative, and the best parts of the book almost always involve him taking front and center stage. All in all, I would describe this as a well-rounded portrait of the Indian Removal Act's creation. Uh, the aftermath is probably best left for other books to describe, but if you want a sense of how we got to that point, Inskeep's volume is a very good choice. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Music Hub.